Now we're going to go into the downwind. Understand the technique I've just taught you is how to get good on downwind. The first one, just so that I know and you can understand why it's so different how most people teach. The first thing we got to realize, we go back to the bicycle again. There are more bicycles and there's more money in bicycles and more bicycles in Spain than kayaking. More money spent on development. And the end of the Tour de France, the last one kilometer, what gear is the cyclist in? He does the whole race in the small gear, but on the last sprint, he's in the biggest gear. Why is he in the biggest gear? Because it gives him the most power. And power, power in downwind is necessary. So, listen to this. That's very important to understand. Everybody thinks to catch a downwind, we must go fast like this. Everybody gets taught, they get taught. So I do it your way, like you've been taught before. If I go fast like this, I'm going 12 kilometers now and I'm going 120 already. Now I catch the wave. I'm going 120, I catch the wave. Now I'm going 20 kilometers an hour. 120, I can't go faster. Now what happens? So when I catch, when I catch a wave, it's power. Just like it. I'm in a cyclist, big wave. There, there at 12 kilometers an hour. I get on the wave going 20 and now I'm a little bit faster and a little bit faster and a little bit faster and faster I can go. But if I start, if I start at high speed like this, how can I get the speed up? To catch the next one. To catch the next one. Okay, so you want to use the power. Like he said, I get on the wave and it's power, power, and then as I get, I go higher. Just like a bicycle. Just like a cyclist at the end of a race. Not fast. It's wrong. Slow to start, power, and then increase your cadence. That's why you catch one and catch another one and catch another one. If you're going too fast at the beginning, you don't catch the next one. Okay. That's why I'm concentrating all the time to have power from my legs to get the power to get on the waves. The downwind is about explosive power for three, four, five strokes and then easy and the next wave and the next wave okay let's go to the waves downwind the first thing you have to know in downwind we always want to be at 90 degrees to the wave if we're 90 degrees to the wave if this wave is going along at 10 kilometers an hour and we're 90 degrees what speed do we have to go you have to go 10. every millimeter here if i go here i have to go 12. same wave here 20 same wave to go 12 or 10 same wave so understand the first thing is never have to look back because just with how waves work whatever's in front is behind never look back always look in front now the most important part of downwind is to be on top of the wave why is it important i will tell you five things if i'm on top of the wave <coughs> i can see Number two, if I'm top of the wave, I can use gravity to go down. Number three, there's energy at the top of the wave. You get caneras, what do you, what do you call them? White horses, the white. It's got energy on top of the wave. Okay. Fourth thing, if I'm on top of the wave, I make my, bo my boat very short. Mira, there, the, bo the wave's like this, and the boat is like this. I make my 5.6 meter boat, three meters. Three meter boat turns much better than a 5.6 meter boat. Turns much easier. And at the top of the wave, important to realize that we only have to have the nose one millimeter down. It doesn't have to be like this. Only need it small. Exactly like a K1 wave. When you're sitting on a K1 wave, the K1 wave is this big. Now, you know the reasons why we want to stay on top. How do you do it? How do you stay on top? Because everybody goes away. Water. Oh. And then water. Paddling water. How do you stay on top? Okay, the first thing. Realize there are more than one wave in the ocean. So you only pick the one that you are guaranteed to catch. 95%. Any less, you wait for the next one. And how you wait for the next one is very important. Because what so many people do is they, they, they try, they try, and then the boat goes like this. Full of water, and then brace. 
hay gente que se espera y llena la bola de la bañera. Ah, ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Break and then oh, there's another way behind you. Too late and then more. So, so understand when you let a wave go, you can still use the power of the wave. Because what hap what happens is that you let the wave go. When a speedboat comes past, if you don't try and catch it, you are like a cork. You want to be like a cork. You want to let that boat go and no water comes in. Then we start to catch the wave and learn how to go onto the top of the wave. Understand when the wave when the wave passes underneath us, we're paddling nicely and we haven't got no water now. No water. As the boat goes down here, we got no water. As the nose goes up, then we paddle. Most people, as the nose goes up, it's like most people. That's not the time. You get that power and you pull from there. So you start paddling early, but you stop early. Okay, so you go there, start early, and when I'm on top of the wave, I stop early. I don't let the boat go down. Number two, how do I stay on the top? I use my rudder. Two ways. First way, like a surfer. This way, and this way, and this way, and this way. And I can do that. Like that, like that, like that. Because if I'm on top of the wave like a surfer, the same. Second way, second way, is more difficult. Is that when you, on that wave, you push your rudder fast like this, like this. Break, 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 break. So when I push this rudder down, look here, when I break this rudder over right here, it is a break, look. Break, break. See, but you got to be quick. Yeah, like that. But you have to practice. The other way to, to slow yourself down, you can open the baler. You brace. <laughs> with this paddle, with this paddle, instead of doing this, you go, you know, stop. Break. Break. Then, also, you can use your elbow. Your elbow, from there, if it's big enough, it's a big wave, lock it in there, okay? Because the final reason that I want you to stay on top, as long as possible. It's like any sport and anything. The better you look, the easier it is. If you're on top and you can stay on top for a little bit longer than the next person, that's what leads to boat speed. So if I'm on top, I can see, I know I've got the power and it's easy. And if I stay there long enough, the wave in front that's like this will open up and then I go. So understand the fifth reason why you want to be on top of the wave is so that you can wait for the wave to change shape to get the opportunity to either go around it or it opens up and you go through the gap. Okay, so it's very important to learn how to go on top. And the exercise that you want to do that with is trying to do 50 strokes, just 50 strokes against your friends. 50 strokes, one, two, and see how far you go and how fast. Because this exercise teaches you, oh, I use 10 strokes, I don't go anywhere. So make it nice all the time. Don't ever, when you're learning, don't just do long downwind. One kilometer, one minute, two minutes, three minutes, because you want to learn how to get good skill. What happens if you go too long, you get tired, you catch nothing. So you see when I, you saw that one on uh, uh, Tuesday, on a big day in, uh, on Facebook, all together. One kilometer, stop, wait, rest, because it's power. We want to have power, because remember, it's big power to go and then relax. So now this is the next thing. Depends on the size of the wave and the length of how much wind can get on the ocean. Depends on how big the waves are. Okay. In small waves, where you can't put your paddle down, then you must go in neutral. You'll see many times, you're paddling, you're on a wave, it's like this but no power down. You must get your heart rate down. No, it's like paddling in freewheel. The reason you paddle in freewheel is that when the opportunity comes, you put the power and it's there. If the wave is too too uh, slow and you do this, and they say, oh, there's an opportunity, then I go, oh, le, eh, or, or no, you're like, eh, and it's too late. You must be ready. But I think tomorrow we'll be doing this. Understand we want to brace. Only brace when you're going down the waves. Too many people brace when they fall off the wave. Understand that when we're paddling like this as well, it's giving us stability. Stability. If you're paddling right and you're just paddling like this, it's stable. Remember, there, there. 
if you stop for one millimeter, all the time paddling, paddling, turning our boat. Because what happens many times, many times we go down the wave, tomorrow it'll be like a down the wave, and the, the nose goes into the bottom and we go, oh, what happened now? The reason why the boat goes where your nose goes, because your limb is at the back, and your back moves, not your front. That's why it's also important, that remember I said before, we want to be on top of the wave, rudder in, nose out. Yes, you always want to have the nose out. Now, tomorrow it's going to happen, the wind's going to come from there like that. You'll be turning left and it, go, and it wants to go this way. And if the boat's going this way, what do you want to do? You try and make, it doesn't work. When you work too hard on the rudder, it gets turbulence. Then the rudder doesn't work and just go. You take the power off the rudder, both feet, for a split second. You let it go, the rudder, the water will go back on it. It takes, difficult because you, it comes off. It's like ABS brakes on your car. It stops. Okay, so now, now to turn you just put small pressure. Now, the other way to turn, your rudder is like a brake. So, if you paddle slowly and we're going across there, Use the body, power. If your nose is out and I pull like this, the nose will move and I don't have to use the rudder. Lots of people ask me, do I use my hips to move and turn? Nada. If I'm turning right, I'm leaning right and I'm bracing right. So tomorrow, I think we're going to be going, you're lucky. Bracing left, because all you right feather can brace left. So you brace left, turn left, there, there. Because if I'm going 20, 25 kilometers an hour, and I lean this, and I turn this way, I'll fall out. You must lean into the corner like a motorbike, like your car. If you're going slowly, you can lean the other way, but when you're going in downwind, you want to be in control and relaxed. You don't lean the other way. Now, the whole thing about going downwind is to find the biggest wave. And how to find the biggest wave is very easy. It's in front of you every time. Steepest part in front of you means the steepest part behind you. That's simple science. Crest, trough, crest. So it's always the same. So, but we always want to be on the steepest part here. But we've always got the steepest part in front, correct? How do we get over this part when it's the steepest? And it's exactly what is exactly opposite to what a surfer does. A surface, if the wave is like this, he takes off here and then he turns there. Right? Steepest part, down and turns to the side. Right? Like that. The wave is like that. You understand? He's always on a steep, a surfer, because he's not speed, there and there. We do exactly opposite. We here, we catch this wave here and we turn around and just go <coughs> to the small part and come back to the big part. So that's why we want to go around and get to the steepest part. You go down like this, too much energy and we might not get over. You want to go around to the steepest. Of course, if you're very good and you wait a little bit, it will change and you can go around as well or do that. But keep up the boat speed. Okay, and the race. The most important thing to think about in downwind is where I'm going. Because so many times, like tomorrow, a lot of people, what? That side, maybe a beta. You can get to a beta because most people is a beta that side. Where is it? It must be there. A beta. Well, you'll end up on an island tomorrow if you don't follow where you're going. You'll end up on an island out there. Because if you think of catching the wave, the wave tomorrow the wave is going this way. You're going to be going. Oh, no. oh, you look up. Oh, there's a the the, the, the finish meta. I mean, that's what happens. You cannot concentrate. So there's five things you got to watch in your head all the time when you're doing downwind. Every time, you, many things to work out. And I'm paddling along. The first thing is, where's the finish? That's number one. Where's the finish? Number two, technique. I don't want to paddle like this. It take all day. It take two hours tomorrow. I want to paddle like a say technique. Number three. Number three. Important. Now I'm going to go again. This is your quadrant. Is teaching another thing. Is that at the moment I told you we don't look at anything behind. Now I want to take your focus from here to 30 or 45 degrees. This is called a quadrant. 
and that's we only going to look at the waves in the small area because if you look at a play, the, the waves in a small area you will see your waves that you can use too many people are looking here looking here looking at the dolphins and they catch no waves okay so now important tomorrow's race very important we will see i think we see the buildings in benidorm you can see the buildings in there when you start there you can see the buildings in benidorm the wind's blowing from this way so the one axis the other axis will be here okay so oh, the wind's blowing this way so one axis here and the other axis here and you stay in between the axis you must stay in between so you're always watching that you're in the axis because if you go out the axis in the axis you'll see rhythm and you'll understand the waves because you're a small area you understand you learn ah this is the same it stays the same if you go out the axis if you go here and you surf out here it's like oh what happened because it's a different angle smaller the gap the smaller the area the easier it is to find the same waves but tomorrow if the wind is exactly like that we must make sure that we don't go too far out so for the if the if the buildings i think it's a building if you see benidorm buildings you put that one axis here and here and you stay there